it's time for an all new adventure to a trail that has been on my bucket list for a long, long time. I was so impressed with the BC trails from my last adventure that I decided to visit this amazing province once again. This time I do have my lovely co-pilot, daughter Ray. She missed the last adventure. Did you at least watch the video? Yeah. Yeah? Did you like it? You didn't actually watch the video, did you? No, I did not. <sighs> She's not even a subscriber, can you believe that? My own I daughter. I am a subscriber, check your list. Ah, uh, so yeah, we're headed to Whipsaw today. Um, I did create an event, but <laughs> nobody actually said they're going, so we'll probably end up doing Whipsaw solo, but it's okay. I got a really good spotter for my drone. So yeah, we're uh, we're set to do this solo if we have to, but it'd be nice to uh, see if there's a group. And you know, Whipsaw is one of those trails. It's kind of like it's kind of like the runs in Moab. Um, you're never alone on the trails. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm prepared. I got Zolio. I got guns. <laughs> Lots of guns. <laughs> we did see a bear yesterday. That was pretty awesome. He looked like a cute little fuzzy teddy bear. It's just a black bear. They're, I'm not really worried about them. It's the the dang grizzly bears. Those are the ones I don't like. So I guess in about 20 minutes, half hour, we'll find out if we're doing this one solo or not. We would be entering this storied trail just a few minutes outside of Princeton at the southeast trailhead. Much to my surprise and relief, Ray and I would not be doing this trail solo. We would be joined by Kaz. But he's not exactly an experienced wheeler. I've done Fisher East in McLean, McLean, whatever it is, Creek, uh, but had to turn back because there was like a mud hole that was four or five feet deep. So I was like, everybody in the group was just like, nope. This is the first actual kind of completed trail, I should say. Even though this is his first real trail, it's always nice to have some company when doing trails like this one. I was, however, a bit nervous about his bone stock gladiator. I've wheeled with plenty of newer Jeeps and I've always been concerned about the unexplainable, low-hanging protrusions that they seem to have. Well, this is like Canada's premier trail, or at least, I don't know, that's what I read online, so. We were gonna find out firsthand if a stock rig on 33s can manage to finish the mighty whipsaw. We've all seen the footage from YouTubers like Just Jeeping Adventures and G from BC. The Whipsaw is not an easy trail. I wanted to do the whipsaw for several years now. I just didn't feel that Ruby was quite up to the challenge. Until now. Not to steal Dynatrack's slogan here, but now I actually do have the confidence to explore. The whipsaw trail was originally established back in 1849 in an effort to connect two forts. Fort Hope and Fort Camrose. Like so many trails that twist through the Rocky Mountains, this vast trail system was created by the Hudson's Bay Company. If I was born in like 1800 and something, I'm pretty sure this dude would have been me. Much like the evil Wayland yutani Corporation from the Alien film franchise, the HBC was everywhere. In the 1970s, many of these trails, including Whipsaw, were converted to a recreation route which is now maintained by a local 4x4 group called the Four-Wheel Drive Association of BC. I can't wait to run this trail. Just a good old
Like I said earlier, we would be entering the Whipsaw at the Southeast Trailhead, which is conveniently located just off Highway 3. This 106 kilometer long trail starts out like most other trails on a wide, well-maintained forest service road. Okay, well, so far the mighty Whipsaw Trail is, uh, well, it's a forestry road. I'm sure I'm gonna eat some crow here on this one, but uh, hoping for it to get a little bit more adventurous soon. I'm sure it will, I've seen the videos. <laughs> Twenty kilometers in, and we were still on the FSR. I was getting a bit impatient. We were nearly a quarter of the way through the route, and we were still on the wide and easy path. I was actually starting to question if I'd even mapped out the correct route or not. At the 25 kilometer mark, the FSR finally started to narrow up a bit. Well, it seems to be getting a little bit narrower, so that's a good sign. A few corners later, it tightened up even more. This is when we came across our first recreation site of sorts, and it's likely another outfitter staging area. Complete with a graffiti covered shack. We found our first murder cabin. <laughs> oh yeah. In fairness, this one was more like a kill stable than a murder cabin. The shitter is way too mint to be out here. This is sus. This is definitely sus. That's what I mean. Like, like there's nails on here that aren't even rusted. Well, let's find out if there's a body. <laughs> no dead bodies, so we carried on. Nothing like a nice Sunday drive in the woods. Not this again. I don't know what day it is, but it's not Sunday. <laughs> We reached a fork in the road. Both led to a series of switchbacks, offering two levels of difficulty. So do you feel up for a little bit of a challenge or do you want to go left? That's fair challenge. Twist my rubber arm. This is where the fun begins. Up to this point, the whipsaw was a two-wheel drive trail. From here on in, it would be four-wheel drive. Well, for the most part. We ran into another group here. They were having some issues with their electronic sway bar. Unfortunately, this would not be this group's only issue today. More on that later. Just a bit behind us, Kaz was slowly making his way up the switchbacks. So far, so good. The Gladiator was having no problems with this trail at all. So in more than a dozen words, how would you describe that section? More than a dozen words? Yes. You want me to write an essay? I want you to just speak your mind, but not say it was fun. Elaborate. What did you think of that section? That section? The climbing of the rocks in such an eloquent way was quite enjoyable. <sighs> Teenagers. <laughs> the interesting thing about this trail is that it has areas off the trail that are almost like playgrounds for off-road vehicles. They are completely optional obstacles that vary in difficulty. Of course, I would take Ruby on as many of them as I could. Our first stop would be at the popular Instagram location that is known simply as Dick's Cabin. Richard Holding, who grew up in Fort Langley, worked on various ranches and sawmills in the early 1900s. He was also involved in hunting and trapping. Huge cheesy AI music. I got what I got. <laughs> in 1948, a range cabin was built 
up the Whipsaw Summit, and he lived his summers at this very cabin. Richard always had a fresh pot of coffee on that he was more than happy to share with passersby. And I sure could go for one of those pots of coffee right about now. We were being hit with some very typical August whipsaw weather. But to be honest, I would take August rain over June snow or July bugs any day. The rain was really starting to settle in now. And it was starting to become a bit concerning. It might add an extra level of difficulty. This made me a bit uneasy, especially with Memorial Rock fast approaching. The other concern I had with these obstacles was Kaz's ride height. The lowest point on my Jeep, the pumpkin on my one-ton rear axle, even when aired down, was over 11 inches off the ground. Not only was Kaz's Gladiator much lower, but it was long. Seeing it navigate this obstacle seemed to mirror the opening scene of Star Wars A New Hope with the Star Destroyer that just kept going and going. That being said, he did make it over this first obstacle easily enough. One down, just 87 more to go. The regular trails started to get a lot more uneven, with more and more sections that would test the articulation or flex of our jeeps. I avoided some of the optional lines so that I would get a feel for a line that would work for the much smaller Gladiator. But so far, the Gladiator was doing just fine. <laughs> that being said, his skid plates were starting to take a bit of a pounding. While not the most picturesque trail I've ever been on, the Whipsaw Trail possesses a rare and unparalleled beauty, all its own. But at the end of the day, I didn't come here to look at the flowers. We had finally arrived at what, in my opinion, is the premier obstacle of the Whipsaw Trail. The Jeff Jansen Memorial Rock. Jeff, who died of cancer in 2005, famously climbed this obstacle in an Isuzu Samurai. Now that is a sight I would love to have seen. The group who was having minor sway bar issues on the newer of the two Jeeps a couple of hours ago seemed to have suffered a catastrophic failure on the much older TJ. It seems that they broke an axle trying to get up this obstacle. So it's um, not awesome. I don't envy the work to get that rig out of this trail at this point. Because uh, the spot we're in, it's, I mean, it's, this is an off-road trail. I think they're pretty much going to have to fix it there. Uh, they're probably going to have to run into town, get some parts, and hopefully people don't pillage the poor thing. Hopefully this nice little TJ doesn't become another rusting hulk like this 70s International Harvester Scout. I'm always curious about what story is behind each of these relics abandoned 
at the side of this trail. What do you think, Ray? Very steep. Should we do it? Holy shit, that was steep. <laughs> My wife is gonna kill me. <laughs> he was awesome. Am I crazy? Yes. Would you do that? I don't know how to drive, so I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, that was insane. Not to do it just once, but to do it twice because I forgot to hit record on the drone. That's insane. But uh, you know what? Those Mickey Thompson MTZs, they are so awesome. Even though the tires were a little bit on the wet side, you know, it just a little bit of skinny pedal and they just pulled pulled Ruby up that like nothing. No lacking for power, no lacking for grip. It was uh, it was pretty awesome. I'm pretty adrenalized right now, I gotta say. That was a rush. After Memorial Rock, I had the false assumption that the rest of the trail would be easy, but that was not at all the case. Whenever possible, Kaz would take any bypasses that existed. But it didn't always work out. Wow. That's uh, weird. Try backing up. It's it's just on the pumpkin, that, that stump. Kaz would be able to free himself on his own this time. But the next obstacle, he wasn't quite so lucky. I think we're starting to see where the stock gladiator has its limitations. But hey, a little bit of scuffing on the skid plates never hurt anything. That's what it's for, right? Plus it's not mine. <laughs> well, I might have to edit that out. In case you're wondering, most of the really tough sections do have bypasses like these deep washouts, which, as usual, film does not do justice. Ruby flexed her way through this obstacle, with all four tires on the ground the entire time. Try that in an IFS. Suckers. It's interesting that um, the top of the world trail is an honor badge trail and this isn't. Actually, no trails in Canada are, which is stupid. Silly Americans. Yes, we're going to have to send Jeep a strongly worded email. Now that we were nearly at the halfway point, how was Whipsaw stacking up for me? Did it meet the high expectations I had going in? Okay, so yeah, this is this is an off-road trail. Pretty much one of the best in Canada I've done so far. I still like Marble Mountain a whole lot because uh, it's a little bit more scenic. But the challenge factor here is just a little bit... I'm not going to say it's, it's high because I still would only rate this as like a 3 out of 10. Um, but it's, it's more prolonged, whereas like Marble Limestone, it's like, yeah, you got the stairs, but then after that it's pretty easy. And then you got the V-notches or the washouts. And then after that, it's pretty easy. This is like sustained. You know, it's it's a lot of technical sections um, that you have to kind of carefully navigate through. Um, and and like I said, they're they're just they're prolonged. As we drew nearer to Wells Lake, the forest seemed to get more rainforesty, which makes sense given we're only a few hundred kilometers away from the BC coast. These conditions, however, can lead to mud holes, which some people like, but I am not one of these people. Fortunately, the standing water was really just that, 
standing water. It just so happened to be mud-colored standing water. Around six hours into our trip, we would arrive at Wells Lake, which really looked more like a pond. It must be a BC thing. This did remind me of the lake that I took my wife to last summer. For those of you who don't know, she's a less than enthusiastic off-roader. I thought it would be like some cool ass lake, but no, it's this. Is this a swamp? I'm telling you, it's blue, a blue swamp. While I do question the designation of lake, I have to say, this was a beautiful spot to camp for the night. The first thing we noticed at the campsite was another creepy murder cabin. For the most part, it seems to be a museum of donated parts, stickers, some well-aged booze. Most everything here could actually be explained, except for one thing. These chains hanging directly above the fire pit. That's just plain weird. Across the pond from the torture cabin was our campsite. The August weather on the Whipsaw Trail can vary quite a bit. It can be smoking hot or cool and damp like it was for us. Cold. You know it's like 18 Celsius, right? Cold. It's, it doesn't feel warm. It's cold. So here I am. T-shirt, shorts. Stop! You're it, it's me like it's crazy. almost 20 Celsius, and, and you're freezing. If really? If I get sick, I'm coughing on you on purpose. If you get sick, Andrea's gonna kick my ass even more than she already is for doing for doing Memorial Rock. I'm in so much trouble, folks. This might be the last just empty every pocket video ever. In an attempt to keep my wife happy and worry just a little bit less about me, I gave her the ability to track my every movement even in the most remote of locations. Was this a mistake? Mom was texting us. Yeah, it's, maybe you should uh, go to the phone instead of filming my suffering. I was actually pretty happy with not only the weather, but the fact that we were able to get calves here with as few issues as we did. It was good, it was good. I definitely didn't think we, I'd be able to, to make it that Far. Like the, looking at those obstacles, it was uh, like oh crap, and then yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad actually going over them. You know, like little little scrape here and there, but uh, slow. So I, I couldn't tell you where it was, but just looking at that, I was like, man, I don't know if my truck can make it over that, and then it did, and it was awesome. So. So yeah, that was, that was kind of the highlight for me. Day one wasn't too bad. Ruby worked really well, almost too well. I actually missed the challenge that my old 35 inch tires offered. That being said, from what I've seen of this trail so far, I do consider it an unofficial honor badge trail. Our second day on the trail started out rather chilly. Well, it didn't freeze overnight, fall was in the air. What? 
I'm shaving. Approximately 57 kilometers of trail still remained. This puts us just past the halfway point. So we got an early start on the day. So um, I slept pretty good. I'm not, as you all know, the biggest fan of camping per se, but um, it was pretty fun. It was a beautiful place, nice and quiet, so quiet. All we could hear was the odd wolf howling and bat chirping or squeaking, whatever bats do. Echolocating. Yes, echolocating. Let's go with that. And right now we're just trying to find the trail out of here. Um, it's kind of a maze of uh, little pathways. But I think we're on the right path. Anyways, um, this is our second day of Whipsaw. And I don't know how long today is going to be, but hopefully we can get off the trail by 3 or 4 o'clock. Because um, we are, I mean, technically we're kind of just past halfway, but I think the hard half is behind us and the easy half is ahead of us. But you never know. It's a Jeep adventure. Anything can happen, right? We would soon discover that the Whipsaw Trail had no intention of easing up just yet. We began a long, steep ascent up what is known as Falcon Hill. It was important to keep focused through this technical section. One lapse and disaster could happen. I, uh, like I said, I haven't finished it because um, he ends up leaving the show. <laughs> Just kidding. Even though this trail has an ominous name, it's actually super easy. But he was my favorite character on the show, so I haven't, I haven't quite finished it yet. I haven't gotten to the episode where Steve Carell left, but um, I'm actually surprised you like that show because you kind of have to have worked in an office to really understand that that's how it actually can be. I think it's funny though. Yeah. Not like, I don't, it's not that I don't get it. I just, no, I, I haven't worked in an office, so I don't fully get it, yeah. I guess. I still well, think I, it's funny. It, it's, a, it's a good, these stupid springs. It's a good preparation for uh, for when you work. I think my LA class was good preparation for <laughs> working with unbearable bosses. Right. Oh shit! I forgot about Gladiator. <laughs> Watch your dance, front and rear. A bit behind us, Kaz was stuck. Even though he was on the bypass, it really wasn't much easier for him than the main obstacle would have been. Gotta be driver. Can't come. He wasn't using enough skinny pedal. There just wasn't quite enough grip to pop the front axle over the ledge without more wheel speed. After a very sketchy off camber four point turn on the trail that I'm happy was not recorded, I got into position to do the recovery. With Kaz recovered, another off-camber entry onto the main trail complete, and yet another super sketchy four-point turn, we were back underway on whatever this part of the trail was called. Someone actually took the liberty of giving this trail a rather fitting designation. Rocky Mountain Road. Yeah, it's a pretty accurate name for it, huh? Yep. So Rocky Mountain Road is what this road is called. If they call this a road in BC, I can't imagine what what the stuff they call a trail looks like. While the trail was very wet, I was relieved that there weren't any mud pits. 
Well, I won't shy away from most obstacles. Deep mud is something I absolutely despise and will avoid at all costs if I can. We were all very much enjoying this final stage of the Whipsaw Trail. It does have a unique beauty to it, but Whipsaw wasn't quite done giving Kaz a hard time just yet. Just a little bit more, a little more. Nice and slow. You're good. Slow, slow down, slow down. Keep coming. The back's going to drop. Keep slow. Keep going slow. Okay, you should be good. Slowly, the mighty whipsaw was being tamed. As we wound through a lush section of forest, we were able to just sit back and enjoy these last few kilometers of trail. Before long, the trail opened up into a large, wide open valley. With the trail all but completed, I have to say, I really did enjoy it. I was, however, expecting it to be just a little bit more challenging. I think I just needed to do more of those side obstacles. That being said, if a trail like Finns and Things and the Top of the World in Moab are honor badge trails, Whipsaw 100% needs to be one as well. What a trail. That was that was a lot of fun. You know, it's uh, it's a nice tight technical trail, but it's not too tight where all you see is bush for three days or two days in our case. Uh, but it's it's such a it's such a fun fun trail. It was a great experience. It's one I would absolutely do again. Given that this trail is usually referred to as one of Canada's premier off-road trails, I couldn't help but draw a few parallels between Whipsaw and Moab. Both offer unique challenges, and in some sections have very similar terrain. This does remind me a lot of Top of the World in Moab. A lot of rocking. We're like 10 minutes in, my back's already fatigued. That's, that's special. I know, old people problems, right? There is one main difference though. While I very much enjoyed the Whipsaw, it doesn't offer much in the way of epic scenery like the trails in Utah do. This might be a bit unfair, but given that this is one of Canada's premier trails, possibly our mecca, it's difficult not to draw the comparison. It's, it's definitely a trail that's worth doing if, if you have the time and you're in the area, or even if you're not in the area, it's, it's, good, to, it's good to just plan and go. Maybe not with a stock Gladiator. I, I love it, it's, it's a great truck. It was, it was a beast. Like it, uh, it, it hit some rough spots a couple times, but uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it just handled most of it, just went right through it, so. Has Kaz started to rethink his next modifications after this trip? 
Uh, winch. Winch. Yeah, yeah. Probably more important than the lift kit, but I don't know. The lift kit looks so cool. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll just do both. Kaz and his bone stock gladiator have successfully conquered one of Canada's bucket list trails. And if I'm being honest, I can't think of a better run for Kaz to pop his trail cherry on. He did great. Um, you know, obviously we had to winch him a couple times and spot him a few times so he didn't tear the crap out of his brand new gladiator. But for the most part, the thing did pretty good. I'm actually quite impressed with what, what a, a stock rig with 33s can do on a trail like Woodstock. But anyways, that was um, a lot of fun. It was a lot more fun with uh, with Ray up welcome. Last time we, we were Rayless. Not this time. We were Ray full. <laughs> that sounds like awful. Ray full awful. Yeah. Well, our whipsaw adventure was at an end. Our BC trip wasn't quite over just yet. We have one of the most amazing trails I've ever been on coming up.